Welcome, Sonia. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, so as you just heard, um, Sonia's in the process of getting Old Navy ready to spin off from Gap Inc. Uh, next year. And uh, my colleague, Phil Waba, profiled you in our Most Powerful Women issue. That's the one you guys have seen around. Um, and there was something from that story that jumped out at me, which is you described your attitude and Old Navy's attitude as being like a teenager who like can't wait to leave the nest. <laughs> So I want to just hold on to that metaphor for a second and ask, like, what is the one thing you are most looking forward to being able to do once you're out from the parental eye of <laughs> Gapping? Well, we, some of us have to think, I think, far back of what it feels like to be 25, which is what Old Navy is. We're a 25-year-old brand. And you know, it's been a, a, a great thing to be part of a company that has a portfolio of iconic brands. But at this moment, I am so excited about the opportunity to spin and uh, you know, take this moment in our history to be what I like to term an $8 billion startup. Mm -hmm. And so we have the scale and the um, you know, ubiquitous aspect of the brand that is big and powerful and connected to the American consumer. And yet, it, there's this opportunity to really think about what we want to be when we grow up, right? The startup side of it, uh, the opportunity to invent, reinvent, change. And so I'm, I'm excited about those possibilities that I think uh, as a mono company, as a mono brand company, it will afford us, you know, the ability to sort of plot the next 25 years. Well, I mean, obviously you're excited about the possibilities, but there are advantages to being a big company or able to share resources like IT. Um, and you also have this scale to negotiate with your suppliers, um, with your partners. So as you stand up as your own company, what do you see as the biggest challenge on that front? You know, certainly we've had um, advantages with being part of the, the larger company. Old Navy on its own, though, is sizable. And for our industry, you know, we sit as the number two biggest brand in America now. And so that gives us, a, um, I think, a, a scale that allows us to get the leverage that we need. Uh, that being said, separating a company into two is, is no small feat. Uh, it's like doing brain surgery, if you will, and mm -hmm. so we're in the middle of that. Uh, I, I'd like to say it feels a little bit like we're seven and a half months pregnant with a 10-pound baby, and we're ready to deliver that baby. You know? That part sounds Yeah, like yeah. so that is, that's the here and now challenge. You know, I think post-spin, it's going to be about how do we keep a little bit of the, um, the maverick attitude that the brand has? How do we not become um, too complacent, too confident? Uh, how do we stay paranoid, humble, and all those things that I think will keep us relevant? I think it's very important in a competitive environment. I like that, stay paranoid. Um, so we hear a lot about the retail apocalypse, whether or not that's an accurate phrase. Um, and you know what we see from a lot of retailers is uh, reducing the number of stores, shrinking stores. Uh, but Old Navy has announced that you're effectively planning to double your store count from, I think, around 1,100 to, to ultimately 2,000. So, why, when everybody else is going the other way, do you think that's a path forward for you? You know, we have been opening stores for several years now, so it's not really a new strategy per se. It's more sharing more broadly what our strategy has been. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it all stems from the North Star of our business strategy, which is, look, we, we deeply believe in this notion of the democracy of style. And so what does that mean? So for us, it means um, a brand and a, and a business that is fully inclusive. Uh, it solves for every age, every gender, every income level, every body shape, and every customer. And as we've explored where we show up and where we don't show up, uh, we had largely stayed out of towns that are below 200,000 people uh, hmm. as a brand. And there are many, many towns across North America where I feel like we are, uh, our customers are underserved. You know, I hear, I hear from them all the time. In fact, there was a, an article in, I think, the Cape Cod Gazette or something like that a few weeks ago where a customer spoke about the fact that when Old Navy opened in Cape Cod, you know, it was like the cavalry came over the hill because he no longer had to drive 45 minutes to the mainland. So to me, it's, it's taking advantage of um, and serving, uh, serving our customers more effectively. Well, you talked about underserved customers, um, and 
actually right before we came on, you mentioned to me that there's a, a pilot program um, that you're in the midst of that you haven't really talked about much publicly. So can you tell us about that? Sure, I mean, under this, the North Star of the democracy of style, we are paying uh, deep attention to our Plus customer. And you know, we've always been in that space. We've had a strong online business for our Plus customer. We've done a 75 store pilot, but we felt like we wanted to go deeper and understand more fully how to best service uh, that population size. And so we, um, we went really deep. You know, we, we lived with some of our Plus customers, we shopped with them, we laughed and cried with them, and we, we from that experience, from that human-centered experience, uh, our strategy evolved. And so we have a 30-store pilot happening right now where we have created a fully integrated um, experience in, in our women's business where you can shop double zero to four X for every style uh, at the same price. And the reaction that our women are, are seeing is, uh, that we're seeing from our women is incredible. I mean, they're just so happy that they are being treated like every other woman wants to be treated. And so. And how big is, do you know, have a sense of how big the plus size customer is for you? You know, our plus size, the, the market is, is underreported. But if you look at the, the demographics of America, the average size woman is uh, a size 16. Right. And so we don't think it's a very well reported segment, but a hugely underserved segment. Okay. Um, I, I want to pivot and uh, actually talk just for a minute about your path to um, Old Navy. And I understand that your interest in fashion and entrepreneur, entrepreneurial fashion goes really far back. Yeah, you know, uh, I have probably a classic immigrant experience. You know, I, I was an immigrant in the country, and, and from that, um, you know, I think uh, all the the good of that, which is you get access to all the opportunity, all the education, and the tough part of that, which is you know you look different, you sound different, uh, you feel different. And so I remember being 12-ish uh, and my full height and very, very awkward uh, at that age, as many 12-year-olds are, and really nothing fit. And that question that we've all asked ourselves a million times, what am I going to wear? Uh, was a really tough one at the time. I, you know, I couldn't afford much. Uh, I, you know, my body was, you know, not easy to dress. And so, from that necessity, uh, was born this uh, desire to create clothing. And it went from, you know, a need-based thing to a passion. And really, m my formative years and my teen years was spent doing that and designing, making clothes, and it became a passion. But again, back to, you know, I think an immigrant background. Um, and when I think about really where my parents came from, which was not a lot, in fact, less than not a lot, really the educational guidance was, you know, you, um, you really pursue professional or education that is more secure, more established, so, you know, my sister became the doctor, I became the engineer, yeah. and uh, I think that's probably a familiar story to some in the room. It was a great path, though, because really my love of making things, um, you know, I did mechanical engineering, I worked in the auto industry mm -hmm. for six years, and. Uh, it, the product is really the red thread for my career, whether it was clothing or cars or, or computers for, for some time as well. From fashion to engineering, back yes. to fashion and plus engineering. Yes. Um, any questions for Sonia in the audience? Questions up, we have one over here. You know the drill, please identify yourself. Hi, Carla Bleicher from Deutsche Welle, Germany's international broadcaster. Um, do you have plans to also spread out in Europe? You know, we are, I'd say we're pretty young in the arc of our brand life. You know, we're 25 years old. Many uh, apparel brands that we compete against are 50, 60, 70 years. And so I think as we look at global expansion, it's a long journey for us. We're focused primarily in North America. We have some franchise businesses uh, in about 15 countries. So more to come as the years unfold. Um, I have a question you mentioned working briefly in the auto industry. Yes. So uh, Sonia worked on the, in a Ford Taurus plant mm -hmm. um, in college, right? I did. Uh, so you were in your 20s. You were supervising men who are probably twice, three times as old as, as you were. What did that experience teach you about managing? Yeah, you know, it was, it was a fun, uh, fun time. I guess I'll use that word. Um, <laughs> 
to cover up some of the other uh, feelings. Uh, you know, it was, it was, listen, it was, it was fascinating. It was, it was a union shop. It was the midnight shift. It was a, a, boi a boiler room job, if you will, you know, and, and it was, but at the same time, you know, what you really learn is people are people and connecting with people about what matters, what's important, uh, is the ultimate connector. So, uh, got through it and I think uh, enjoyed it in the end and, you know, Every opportunity like that is a learning opportunity and something you take with you. Yeah. Um, I also have a question about your predictive ability. So that you said that the big part of your job at Old Davy is um, looking a year ahead, two years ahead, to figure out what is going to be big. Um, has anything surprised you in your time? Well, some things are. Definitely interesting. I mean, a, a great brand is someone is, is a brand that you can rely on and count on, and you know um, that's what we strive to do. At the same time, fashion is forever changing, mm -hmm. right? And it is remarkable when you step back and you think about how people dress and how that's changed over the years. Um, you know, I think uh, I'll, I'll share an example of you know seven eight years ago, we did not even have an active business, mm. for example, mm -hmm. right uh, and now our active lifestyle business is a billion dollars of our eight billion, and uh, you know the casualization of how Americans dress uh, continues. You recently hired um, an executive from Athleta. that's right, that's right. My chief creative officer has joined us as uh, as the uh, old CEO of Athleta, and so we definitely see that trend continuing, and so all I have to do is look at my eighteen year old son because I don't know, uh, street joggers, also known as sweatpants, has become, <laughs> you know, has become okay to wear to yeah. dinner, to date, to, to work. you know, to work, to sleep. And so that is, you know, these are, that's a, I think that is the fun of fashion is, is yeah, things are constantly changing. Okay. And, and so staying relevant is, is important. And um, is there one thing, we have to wrap up, but is there one thing you would tell all of us like, we should go out and add to our closets now, and we'll be thanking you in a year, in two years. <laughs> well, I was thrilled. Not sweatpants, I, please. I, right, right. Well, I, I have to advocate for our rock star jeans. I'm wearing them oh. now, and they're, I think, the number one women's jean in America. So please go try them. They'll fit all of How you. How many they're of those great. do you sell a day? We sell 40,000 a day. Wow. Yes. So Serious. that's cool. Okay. Uh, so that. And then, and then for a little fashion, you know, the, the camera woman behind the stage was commenting on my jacket, so please, please go buy that too. <laughs> um, thank you so much, thank Sonia. You.